making a Stuart model steam plant part 22, painting the engine parts and reassembling them after 24 hours, ready for the next part of the operation which will be making the engine run properly. This is a painting video to start off with but I'm not going to play music over it because I've got some things I want to say. I'm just curious to see whether any of my viewers out there in the world can interpret dreams because I had a dream the other day and I can't really figure it out. Generally speaking, as far as I can see, dreams are something that the brain does whilst it's processing data. It runs a video. So here's a dream. See what you make of it. Please don't hazard a guess. Only answer the question if you know a little bit about interpretation of dreams. I used to live in a house many years ago which was two houses knocked into one and it had two staircases. Later on in my life I moved out of this house and turned it into the recording studio. But this dream that I had only the other week was set in the house before I converted it into the studio. In the dream I was in the central area of the house with my family and friends. But in the dream I had a sense of foreboding and there were some strange noises from the staircases at each side of this central area. And when I looked at the staircase, I was quite concerned to see a Tyrannosaurus Rex at the top of the stairs. So I did what I thought everyone should do, which, if you have a Tyrannosaurus Rex coming down your staircase, lock the door. In the dream, I thought it would be a really sensible idea to have a look up the other staircase, and guess what? There was another large carnivorous dinosaur coming down the stairs at the other side, so I locked that door as well. The odd thing about this dream, though, was not the dinosaurs coming down the staircase, it was the fact that it seemed that only I was aware of this. Everyone else in the room was quite calm, cool and collected. And no, I hadn't been watching Jurassic Park or any sort of movies with dinosaurs in it, and I'm just curious to see what would have triggered a dream like this. I know it wasn't the solvent from all the painting I've been doing, because this dream was before I did this. And here, to finish the story, is a gratuitous shot of this genuine Stuart Green paint drying. 24 hours later, something really good arrived through the letterbox. Some 6BA by half inch long brass round head screws. If you watched the last episode, you will realise why I needed to buy these. I'm not going to use them to fasten the engine's box bed onto the baseboard. I'm going to shorten 8 of these bolts to hold the cladding in place. But not yet. I don't want to fit the cladding too early in case I mark it. This is an interesting job. Refixing the engine to the box bed. And I've just shown a top tip, which is to use the point of the scriber to centralise a 7BA nut on one of the studs. I had to do this six times. Only 24 hours later, the paint is not really hard yet. It needs to be left for a good bit longer. And I'm being very careful not to mark the green paint. That's another nut in place. Here we go again. There's a bit of a technique required. You hold the scriber firmly, but you do not hold the screwdriver that's rotating the nut firmly at all. Just touch the nut and eventually it will find its way onto the thread of the stud. And after spinning it all the way down, just use a spanner and very carefully tighten the nut. As you can see, this is a 7BA spanner and I do believe it to be a Stuart 7BA spanner. I've just mentioned a distinct technique that you need to use to spin nuts onto studs, but it doesn't always work. Look at this display of incompetence. This really did take a long time. The video is running at twice normal speed, and I've shortened the original footage. In the end, the nut engaged with the stud, the bird started to sing, and the sun came out. To tighten the centre nuts, I used a very cheap Blackheads Engineering ring spanner which is okay for all of the nuts really. I'm just using this open-ended spanner on the end ones for diversity. With the last nut fitted in place, I can now lubricate the engine ready for a run. I'm using the oil that I always use these days. It's from a company called Hallett Oil, and it's really good stuff. I have to say that I still mix in with my oil a small amount of rapeseed oil that you buy from the supermarket the original tip about using rapeseed oil as an anti-friction additive was given to me by a scientist who worked at an oil refinery. A friend of mine who worked on the railways and died a few years ago told me, before he died, all about rapeseed oil and explained that it was frequently used on hot axle boxes and centre bearings of locomotives. 
Now it's time to refit the flywheel to the crankshaft. And here is a shot of my box of Allen keys. I know this looks like disorganised chaos. They're in the same box as my collection of grub screws, and I can generally find the right one from this collection. And by doing it that way, you soon learn to spot the correct Allen key, and sometimes I can get it right straight away, other times I might have to have a couple of goes to find the right one. Here's a useful tip. When you're using the long part of the Allen key to get more grip on it, I use a small adjustable spanner, a barco of course, to tighten the grub screw. But don't go too mad, you do not want to break the Allen key inside the grub screw. In the next episode I'm going to be taking a really close look at the slide valves, and that is why I'm temporarily fitting the cylinder drains in place. The first three screwed in OK, but when I screwed in the fourth one, something went a bit wrong. On these drain cocks there is a washer with a square centre. And as I was fitting the fourth cylinder drain, this washer broke in half and fell off. I'm going to fit the washer from this damaged drain tap onto the new one. The problem was it didn't fit, so I had to file it out with a square file like this, which took a while. But eventually it fitted perfectly, and here's the fourth drain tap fitted in position. The last thing to do in this episode is to screw the engine down onto the piece of softwood. That way the flywheel will not bottom out and bend the crankshaft. And that's it for this episode. I have to go because there is a Velociraptor at my front door. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.